So the uh, uh, skin disorders can be classified as papillosquamous and bullous disorder. These are the common uh, skin diseases. So papillosquamous means what? Papillosquamous disorder means these are the disease where there is scaling, predominant scaling. Now scaling is because of excessive proliferation of the keratinocyte or the skin cell which are present in the epidermis. Okay, so they uh, proliferate uh, at a, such a level that the the keratinocyte becomes superficial uh, from the basal they quickly become superficial cells and the thickness of superficial cell becomes increased and you get discrimination. So this is the appearance of the papillosquamous disorder. So what are the uh, common papillosquamous disorder? Okay, so we have psoriasis, we have parasoriasis, lichen planus, pteriasis, rosea and seborrheic dermatitis. These are all the papillosquamous disorder. So basically they have similar morphology, but the, the etiology is heterogeneous, okay? Uh, they usually present with some papule and scaling. So this is a common between these diseases. They have similar morphological appearance where they have papule for scaling, uh, but the etiology is different and they are, they are the, it's an heterogeneous group. Second group of disorders called vesiculobullous disorder. Okay, So here we are going to find either a vesicle or a bullet. So if, if this is a vesicle and bullet, which you will clearly appreciate in this picture. But here what's happened is, the bullet or vesicle is ruptured, so you find some erosions. So papillosquamous disorder, we have psoriasis, lichen planus, petriasis, rosea, seborrheic dermatitis, secondary syphilis. A vesiculobullous disorder could be acute or chronic acute, means something which has happened over days to week. Uh, that's chicken pox, herpes zoster, erythema multiforme. We have chronic lesion, that is over weeks to months. Uh, we have femphigus vulgaris and bullous femphigus. Okay, so we're going to go in detail into each one of them and try to understand their uh, their pathophysiology and their clinical feature and management. So, uh, uh, so we're going to describe any skin lesion. Uh, we have uh, we have a peculiar phenomenon, a skibnus phenomenon, it's called isomorphic phenomena. This basically describes a skin lesion which appears at the site of injury. Okay, and it is classically seen in psoriasis, vitiligo, warts, lichen planus, molluscum. So what is this? So suppose you have a psoriatic lesion on the on the forearm, and you try to scratch their tummy. So if you the psoriatic lesion can appear in the in the in the tummy. Okay, that is called as the Kibner phenomena, also known as isomorphic phenomena. So this is uh, one of the clues where you can narrow down the differentials. Let's come into psoriasis. Psoriasis is one of the most common skin diseases. Uh, you'll get to see in UK and uh, you get a lot of question on psoriasis. Out of the eight question in uh, dermatology, about two questions are on psoriasis. It affects about two to three percent of the population. Common risk factors are presence of diabetes, hypertension, ischemic heart disease. It has got a, a predilection with HLAC, W6. Here you're going to get red scaly plaques. You can see here quite red and scaly plaques. Uh, and the the common sites are usually on the extensor surface of the elbow, the knees, the sacrum, and in the skull. In addition, you might get some nail changes. Okay, what are the nail changes? You get pitting and onycholysis. Pitting is just a small depression over the uh, over the nail. Onycholysis is separation of the nail from the nail bed. That's also seen in thyrotoxicosis. Arthritis. About twenty percent of patients with psoriasis can have arthritis. What is called psoriatic arthritis. So they belong to a group of what's called zero negative spondyloarthropathy. So psoriatic arthritis belongs to a group of um, belong to a group of disease known as zero negative spondyloarthropathy. That means usually they present with asymmetric peripheral arthritis, usually involvement of the distal interphalangeal joints, and we're going to discuss about that in detail in rheumatology. Now what are the basic pathology of psoriasis? It's an autoimmune disease. There is abnormal T cell activity which stimulates the keratinocytes to produce uh, tumor necrosis factor, interferon, uh, interleukin-12, which is going to cause proliferation of the keratinocyte. So the, uh, the keratinocyte is going to proliferate much faster. The normal proliferation takes about 20 to 25 days, uh, whereas it becomes shortened to like three to five days. Okay, So we have excessive scaling because we have a lot of keratin uh, coming up from the skin. Now, IL-17 is a pro-inflammatory cytokine, which is involved in psoriasis. Now, this is very important because we use some a specific cytokine uh, for the treatment of psoriasis. Psoriasis is also an independent risk factor of cardiovascular disease. So if you look at the 
uh, majority of these patients do have a high risk for cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction, stroke. A factor which may exacerbate a current lesion could be trauma, alcohol, drugs, beta blockers, lithium, anti-malarial, NSAID, and ACE inhibitor. Okay, do remember as I mentioned, the, most of these patients do have hypertension and the two drugs which we need to avoid in these group of patients are beta blockers. So beta blockers, specifically atenolol, they have been linked with the worsening of the psoriatic lesion. So it's recommended not to use beta blockers. Other drug which commonly prescribed, especially in diabetic, hyper, uh, diabetic hypertension, it could be ACE inhibitors, that's enalapril. So we need to avoid these two drugs when you go to treat a uh, patient of diabetes and hypertension in patients who have got psoriasis. Steroid withdrawal, sudden stoppage of steroid. For whatever may be the reason, you're going to stop steroid suddenly, you get a flare up of the underlying psoriatic lesion. There are uh, different forms of psoriasis. One which normally uh, seen is classically seen in the extensor aspect of the uh, forearm, elbow, and sometimes you get in the scalp as well. But there's a, 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 a less common entity known as guttate psoriasis. psoriasis. So this is common in children with adolescent. Here it is precipitated by streptococcal infection, usually a tonsillitis about a couple of uh, weeks prior to the lesion. There could be some teardrop papules on the trunk and the limbs. Now, most cases resolve spontaneously within two to three months. Now, topical agents uh, are given as per the psoriatic lesion. We will discuss the treatment of psoriasis in detail in subsequent slides. Now, UVB phototherapy or tonsillectomy is used for recurrent uh, episodes. Uh, about the management of psoriasis, uh, so what, if you understand the pathophysiology, it's basically an autoimmune disease. Uh, so we need to treat when it is significant, uh, it causes significant risk to the patient. So initially, because the lesions are quite dry, you can apply simple emollient or you can apply coal tar. Coal tar is the one which is going to inhibit the DNA synthesis. Now, when you talk about pathophysiology of psoriasis, you know that there is excessive cellular proliferation. So if you're going to block DNA synthesis, the cellular proliferation is going to get slowed down. So you can apply topical coal tars. Or you can use topical steroid as well, especially if you have flexural area. What are the flexural area? For example, elbow, axilla, groin, these are flexural areas. Calcipotrial is basically a vitamin D analog. Again, decreases the epidermal proliferation, restores the normal uh, layer of the skin. Dipronol, another a drug which is going to uh, inhibit the DNA synthesis. It can uh, get, uh, you have to wash off after 30 minutes. Side effects are usually burning and staining. So sometimes most of the uh, most of the uh, ointment or topical application may contain a combination of these, like uh, corticosteroid um, uh, or a coal tar and calcipotrial. So this this could be a combination that you can expect in the topical uh, uh, topical uh, regimen. Flexural psoriasis, uh, as I mentioned, flexural areas are those like elbow, axilla, groin, popliteal fossa. So we manage with emollients, topical steroid. Phototherapy is a systemic therapy. So where we are going to give ultraviolet B light, the bandwidth of ultraviolet B is about 311 to 313 nanometer. Uh, that could be the uh, ideal UVB uh, uh, range at which you would like to give treatment. Sometimes we can give what's called as photochemotherapy. We are going to combine soralin, which is one of the drug which, is, uh, which will increase the photosensitivity of the skin and subsequently expose them to ultraviolet A light, what's called PUA, that is soralin plus ultraviolet A. So that is another systemic form of therapy which could be useful. And the problem with giving phototherapy is that they have it increased risk of skin, ca skin cancer, especially squamous cell cancer, and there could be a rapid aging process of the skin. Now, this is an example of PUA therapy where the person has taken a soralin and patient is exposed to phototherapy, uh, ultraviolet A therapy. Now, how does soralin uh, uh, acts with um, acts with the, the phototherapy. So Sorali interacts with ultraviolet radiation to form what's called as DNA photoadducts. The resulting photoadducts produce therapeutic effects. So basically it's going to block the DNA replication. It slows down the keratinocyte proliferation, suppresses the cutaneous immune reaction by suppressing the multiplication or activity of the Langerhans cell, the T lymphocytes, the natural killer cell. It may also affect the melanocyte, mast cell, fibroblast and endothelial cell. So what are the inflammatory cells which are present in the skin, like Langerhans cell? They're all suppressed due to the effect of the soralin potentiated by ultraviolet radiation. Now, there are different 
uh, com, uh, the general preparation of the skin uh, treatment, which is available. For example, the common one you come across is called emollient. What does what does emollient do? It restores the skin barrier to soften the skin stain. Basically, you are going to soften the skin's texture. Now, why do you use in a dry skin or skin with fine lines or wrinkles? Common ingredient usually they contain fat like lipids, oils, colloidal treatment, shea butter, isopropyl palmitate. Second thing, what you can come across is occlusives. Occlusives, they are, they are going to create a barrier over the skin to trap the moisture. So usually, uh, you when you have a sorry, super dry or damaged skin, they contain usually waxes, silicone, and oils. You also call humectant, which pull the water into the skin. Uh, it's used when you have the skin is capsaicin, sorbitol, urea, aloe vera. So they have property of humectant. So basically you use aloe vera when you have a very oily skin. Uh, if you're going to use emollient, usually you prefer in a dry skin. And occlusives are rare, but they are used in when you have super dry or damaged skin. Now this is a scalp psoriasis. So a gentleman who has had a scalp psoriasis, you can clearly make out. So you get an erythematous lesion with multiple scaling, which you can, you can clearly see. So what are the other systemic therapy? What we So other drug is methotrexate. So usually useful if there is a psoriatic joint disease, that is psoriatic arthritis. As we mentioned, that 20% of the patient with psoriasis can have psoriatic arthritis. Other biological drugs we have is all anti-TNF drugs, anti-tumor necrosis factor like infliximab, etanercept, adalimumab. Now these are the same drug which you use in rheumatoid arthritis as well. We also have ustekinumab, which is interleukin-12 receptor blocker. We also have Ixikizumab, which is anti-IL-17. If you remember, anti-IL-17 IL is one of the important leukemia, which is going to increase the proliferation of the keratinocyte. Other drugs are cyclosporin and systemic steroid. Now, depending on with what area of the uh, area of the skin is affected, we have uh, uh, different um, protocols of treatment. In general, we for a mild disease, we give topical therapy. For a systemic disease, we give uh, systemic therapy. So uh, initially for scalp psoriasis, we can give calciprotrol, which is basically a vitamin D analog or a combination of steroid and uh, shampoo or a combination of steroid with vitamin D analog uh, or just a tar shampoo. So if you have a psoriasis with arthritis, you are going to go directly to systemic therapy like methotrexate or one of the biological drugs. If the patient does not have a systemic uh, as, uh, arthritis but has a very limited disease. So then you're going to use topical therapy if required phototherapy. Whereas if there's extensive disease, again, you will going to go for the systemic therapy like PUA therapy or systemic drug like methotrexate or, or uh, biological therapy. So this is about the summary of the treatment of psoriasis.